Hello and welcome to Accent Excellence. I'm Chuck Leyenberger and coming up on this month's show, we're going to introduce you to two new principals here at Roanoke County Public Schools. Also, we're going to take you to the kickoff of our very successful Load the Bus event. So don't go anywhere. Accent Excellence starts next. Hi and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at Clearbrook Elementary School and joining me is a brand new face here at Clearbrook and a brand new principal here to Roanoke County Public Schools. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Beth Grimm Umbarger, who's the new principal here at Clearbrook. Yes, First sir. and foremost, congratulations on becoming a principal. Thank you very much. It's been a fantastic start. Now, this is not, though, your first time with Roanoke County, it is so not. you have quite a history I with do. us. So, kind of talk about when did you first join and kind of how things have gotten you to this point. Um, I first joined Roanoke County Schools um, about 18 years ago, and I started out as a special education teacher at William Bird High School, and I worked there for about four years and taught special education, was a special ed coordinator. Um, and then next, I moved into being the special ed supervisor at the school board office, and I supervised a various um, disability areas and I believe I was there for about five years under Carol Whitaker's leadership and I needed to get back in the schools. Um, I missed being around kids and being a part of a school community. So I went back to the schools and I became the assistant principal at Glenver Elementary for one year and their enrollment dropped and so next I was moved to be the assistant principal at Bonsack. Um, elementary under Dr. Kagey and I worked there for four years um, and then next I worked um, in Botetuck County as principal at Greenfield Elementary um, and it was a wonderful community and I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit but I was ready to come back to Rennick County. Um, my kids were getting ready to leave home and I felt like I needed to also be a better mother so I decided that I was going to go back to the classroom and so four years ago, I became the teacher of a classroom at Burlington of children with significant disabilities. And it was a fantastic experience. And I did that for three years. And then I became the assistant principal for one year. And then this year, I moved here for principal at Clearbrook. Well, we're thrilled to have you here as, as principal at Clearbrook. And there's a lot frankly, a wealth of mm -hmm. experience that you're now mm -hmm. bringing to this position. How is that going to help you and how will you draw on that mm -hmm. as you begin your time as principal here at Clare Road? Well, I will have to tell you that one of the most um, rejuvenating experiences was going back into the classroom for three years. Um, it really gave me that perspective of being a classroom teacher and the, um, the stress and maybe some of the expectations that we put teachers under. So I really draw on that first and foremost of actually being back in the classroom for three years. Um, I've also taught um, and worked at every level um, all the way through preschool to high school. So that gives me a really broad um, view of development and the, maybe the transitions and the different transitions from middle school to high school and also what children go through. Um, I have a very strong background in special education um, which really is provides instruction that's just good sound instruction for any kids. Mm -hmm. So I really pull on that um, information as well. And also I'm familiar with Raynaud County. I know, you know many of the folks that work at the school board office and in the schools and so I've had a lot of support mm -hmm. um, from folks that I've known in the past and so with all that together I've had a very, very smooth, wonderful start here at Clearbrook. There's a lot of things over the course of time mm -hmm. uh, from 18 years ago till now that, that education and teaching mm -hmm. has greatly changed over those it years, has. hasn't it? Yes, it has, very much. How is that going? How are you seeing that change now as a school leader? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the expectations are different. Um, we, we continue to ask teachers to do more and more um, with less time, but fortunately in Roanoke County, we, there, we are provided with so much support. Staff development and the staff that we need, mm -hmm. you know, of course, any type of su supply that we need in the schools and so with demands we're also getting up to speed with that through the support of the administrative office and so you know everything is just moving in a different direction we try to look at things in a more of a global perspective um, and getting ready kids kids ready for that at a very early age um, so there's a lot of change um, in school systems but it's also exciting what, is, what's, what are you looking forward to most for the coming years your first year as a principal I really enjoy being back into a school of course I was as a teacher um, but I am 
sort of a natural um, when it comes to um, leading and um, being visionary. I sometimes struggle with detail and I need some help with that, but I love to look um, in long term and what are some of the things that we can improve. Um, Karen Pendleton left the school in fantastic shape, so it's been a very, very easy transition. And so we're just looking at fine tuning. Um, one of the things that we're working on as a staff is our theme is building a better me and looking at ourselves as professionals um, in a professional, in a profession that we need to continually grow, look at ourselves with self-reflection, um, what areas do we need to improve. Um, I'm also excited about finding strengths that teachers have and, the, and building capacity in that and providing them with any type of um, staff development that they might need so they can be the lead um, within the school. And so we really want to build on that and all of us becoming better instructional leaders um, and supporting one another in really having a fantastic school. Well, we're absolutely thrilled that you are here uh, at Clearbrook. And mm -hmm. as you said, you're, you're taking over for Karen Pendleton, mm -hmm. who hasn't gone away. Yeah. She has moved over to Penn Forest Elementary. And so we offer our congratulations also mm -hmm. to Karen as well and to the folks at Penn Forest. But thank you so much for you're being with welcome. us. And again, congratulations on thank being you. a principal here at Clearbrook. And we know it's going to have a, you're going to have a great, uh, great year and great time here at Clearbrook. And we know there's a lot more acts and excellence still to come. So don't go anywhere. need you to care now. Don't turn a blind eye to teenage drinking. Hi and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're here at the Valley View Walmart where we are loading the bus for kids. So for more, let's head over to Roanoke County Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Greg Killo as well as Roanoke City Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Rita Bishop. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rita Bishop and I have the pleasure of being superintendent for Roanoke City Public Schools. There are a number of people here and I'm going to absolutely make a mistake and leave someone out. But let me give it a try. First of all, I believe Lorena Wilson is here representing Delegate Sam Razul. So maybe she would just sort of raise her hand really high. Thank you for being here, Lorena. I would like to introduce uh, Mark Cathy, who is a member of our school board in Roanoke City. Thank you, Mr. Cathy, for being here. I really want to thank the Patrick Henry Drumline for being here today and helping us celebrate what is it going to be a wonderful weekend event. And And our band director is with them, Alex Schmidt from Patrick Henry. And I note that um, Archie Freeman is here from William Fleming. He, he brings his own cheerleaders, did you notice? Joe Jablonski, give him a drum roll, guys. The principal at Patrick Henry. He brings his own musical group. And I do have to plug Mr. Schmidt. The uh, Patrick Henry High School Band is going to Carnegie Hall this year, which is pretty amazing stuff. Well, William Plumbing cheerleaders, uh, you're great. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, um, I've worked in a lot of school districts for a long time, and I have never known an individual who has more generosity of spirit than George Joyner, the marketing manager for Walmart. And Mr. Joyner, thank you very much. And I know your lovely wife is standing there behind you. Thank you very much. And we have two of the Walmart managers with this gentleman. Thank you. And we really appreciate you being here. Let me just uh, talk for a moment and sort of give you a sense of what we're going to do. Virginia Heights principal, Teresa Schmitz here, and we're going to engage her students in a few minutes with helping us load the bus. So will you help us with that, boys and girls? Yes. Good, okay. And so uh, 
Let me just say a few words and I'm going to ask Greg Kilo, who is a superintendent in Roanoke County, to say a few words. And I know that, uh, I think I speak for both Greg and myself when I say that we were here at 6 o'clock this morning <laughs> with, uh, with Justin McLeod, the Community Relations Coordinator for Roanoke City Schools, and Chuck Lyonberger from the county. And you guys do a great job of telling our community what all of this is about. So what is it about? This is tax-free weekend. And uh, the governor would tell you if he had, were able to be here, he would tell you that he's hoping that tax-free weekend will pay off for students. Now, I'm not very political, but I will tell you that nobody cares more about kids other than possibly George Joyner and his crew than uh, Terry McAuliffe and his wife, Dorothy. They have done so much for the students at Roanoke City. But let me tell you that on any given day in Roanoke City, we have between 500 and something and 600 homeless students. So if you're homeless, do you think you go shopping for school supplies? Probably not. And uh, by our last best count, and it's gone up, about 76% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. And we have several schools in fact, I think 18, is that right, Mr. Barnett? Uh, you're hiding back there. This is our deputy superintendent. Thank you for being here. 18 schools where students simply get free lunch. It's, that's the way it is. So when I was a little girl, I went shopping for school clothes and school supplies. And we always compared things like who really uh, uh, and that day it was who had the prettiest pencils and the most unique pencil box. That doesn't happen if you're homeless. That doesn't happen if you don't have any money. And for so many of us, five, ten, twenty dollars or greater isn't really very much money. But it makes all the difference to these children because then they look like they're more advantaged peers and no one ever really knows. So what happens is all of this got was split among the participating school districts. And then from Roanoke City Schools' perspective, we have a, a back-to-school extravaganza. The operative word there would be grin. The kids just grin. And I was telling someone earlier this morning, I don't think I've ever had a kid not say thank you. And that speaks so much for our children. So I am very grateful, and um, I appreciate everybody who is here, and uh, thank you for being here. Let me introduce Dr. Greg Kilo to you, the superintendent of Roanoke County. You know, when you look at all this energy, William Fleming, Patrick Henry, you, know, you guys have done a great job. Thank you for being here, and just thank you for this event and the energy. Um, I just feel honored to be here and be a part of something that's so fabulous, but not just fabulous, it's really needed. And at this time, I'd really like to introduce um, two of my school board members that are here, uh, Mr. Mike Gray and uh, Mr. Donald Butzer. We have uh, many of our board members will be serving at these events, so if people have an opportunity, they may be able to get out and see um, some of the Roanoke County School Board members. Uh, Mr. Leinberger had recruited them very heavily to get them to work into helping load the bus. Also, I would like to thank Walmart. This is the 15th year. Um, George Joyner and your team and your crew, it's just been fabulous. Uh, I can't re I'm going to repeat what Rita has already said, but it is so true. The, all the work, the dedication, the support to make this happen, the support of all of your employees that really take this to heart. We just thank each of you for this. The community, thank you for coming together as a community. You know, we don't sometimes realize the little things that we do, but making a donation, just giving a notebook or pencils or paper or glue, you know, I think of a great artist or a great musician, if they didn't have the tools to do that work or to get that down, what would have happened in our society? Well, think about it as a child. You're going in the first day of school or some day and you just don't have those materials. How can you perform? How could you show your creativity? How could you 
perform at all. Maybe one of these children one day will become a great, maybe a great composer, an astronaut, president, we don't know. But because of your service, because of the education we're able to give students here in the Roanoke Valley, and the support through load the bus, we may be able, to, this child one day may come back and give back to this community and may be a great leader. So your little gift may 20 years down the road have a great dividend, if I can say that. And I know of many people and that I've seen in their lives and lives changed because of simple donations. This helps to promote confidence and self-esteem. I'm like Rito, I have not seen many students when you give them these supplies that aren't appreciative and thankful, and they know that it's making a difference, and it actually makes them work harder every day, and they become dedicated. And I'd like to thank all of our teachers that are here today, because, because of our teachers, we have a great school division system here in Roanoke Valley. We have students that are going out and making a great deal of difference, and it takes a great teaching staff, it takes a great community. As it's been said, it takes a village, it takes our bo school board members, it takes the people at Walmart, it takes everybody. And I'm just so proud to be a part of this. Um, and at this time, if uh, I just want to thank everybody for the support. Thank you. Well, we could use some kid power loading the bus, Mrs. Schmidt, so. And what about board members? And maybe uh, the board members would come up and help. And so. the cheerleaders, Dr. Bishop. Uh, cheerleaders, feel free. Come on. Again, this is a huge you community guys, collaborative. Guys spot, right? And we're very <laughs> grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Killo and Dr. Bishop, and thank you to everyone who has helped us load this bus. But don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more acts and excellence still to come. Drivers pay attention. School buses are back on the road, and we need your help to keep our students safe. Please never pass a stopped school bus. Remember, if you see those flashing red lights, you're required by law to stop. Keep an eye out for school buses while you're out on the road, and please give buses plenty of space. School buses need more room to come to a stop, so don't follow a bus too closely. Remember, they're big and they're yellow, so please give them space. A message from Roanoke County Public Schools. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're back again here at the central office, and joining me again, Dr. Ken Nicely. And when you see Dr. Nicely and you see the strategic framework, you know what's about to come. We're talking all about our strategic framework here at Roanoke County Public Schools. And back many issues ago, actually now, back way into the winter of 2016, we kind of gave an overall view of the strategic framework. And now we're kind of taking these deeper dives. So we've talked about deeper learning, and we've started talking about all of the four C's, and we've saved, in some ways, the best C for last, yep. and that's creativity. And, and Dr. Nicely, you know, creativity is almost like a, it's a wraparound C for all of the others, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. Well, you know, Chuck, a lot of times when we, when we think of creativity, I think people automatically go to, to the arts. You know, we mm -hmm. think of, okay, we're going to help students be creative with a project, which means they need to do something artistic. And, and certainly we embrace that. We love for, um, for students to uh, express themselves uh, through those uh, media. But creativity really uh, goes much deeper than that. When we think about um, the students that, um, that we have and the fact that uh, you know, our aim is to develop their opportunity-ready skills, 
develop those, those skills that they're going to need and they can comply in multiple settings, creativity really is, is the linchpin and, and really is the heart of problem solving. And you know, it really kind of comes at it, I think with, we've all heard the phrase, think out of the box. Mm -hmm. And I think the ability to get out of that box is creativity. Well, it, it, it is, and, and, and so, you know, when you break it down, and once again, you know, when we th think about all of these skills, as we've discussed over the past few months, um, you know, for some students, some of these skills come sort of naturally, you know, they sort of have innate uh, ability to, to problem solve, to, to think critically, to, to collaborate, do some of these different skills. But, but our job in the classroom is to help students develop these skills and to discover things about themselves that they may not have known otherwise. And so, you know, when it comes to actually developing those skills, helping students to um, really see themselves as creative people, um, you know, teachers can do uh, some very specific things to help that along. For example, um, just everyday questioning strategies, the kinds of questions that we ask mm -hmm. our students. Um, and it goes back to this idea of balance that um, uh, we're trying to achieve in terms of that learning experience. And so, you know, a lot of times in education and learning, you know, maybe there is that one right answer. I mean, when it comes to, um, you know, a fact of some sort, mm -hmm. so whatever the discipline is. Um, but we also want students to not only be able to respond to those um, what and, and who kinds of questions, but the, the how and the whys. Right. And to the extent that we ask students those kinds of questions, then we help them to, to truly think outside the box and to dig deeper and to uh, see that, you know, to be able to really develop those creativity skills. And it seems like, again, with creativity and, and again, with all of the four C's, it leads to something that I think we've been kind of hinting at all along, and that's innovation. Well, right. So, um, so innovation, when you break that word down, you think of, you see the word new in there. So, uh, so what we want students to be able to do is to acquire knowledge, develop the skills, but then the ultimate outcome is to be able to apply that knowledge, apply those skills in novel or new situations. And that's where that idea mm -hmm. of innovation comes in. Um, and, and, and again, to uh, take what they know and maybe create something new, uh, explore maybe what uh, they, they know and say, okay, I'm going to actually produce something new. Um, you know, we think about uh, the different kinds of projects that we ask students to do. Um, you know, maybe uh, in a more traditional classroom setting, you know, we're looking for students to kind of produce things that are very similar. Um, but really, if we want to, them to develop their creativity, they do need to be more mm -hmm. innovative and have the opportunity to, um, to have multiple right answers and to come up with, with novel solutions to problems. And again, it gets back to that concept that, you know, that we're in, throughout this entire strategic framework that, that failure is not a bad thing in many ways. Failure is a good thing or maybe even a great thing. Sure. I mean, one of the things that uh, uh, we want to teach students is to, uh, you know, first of all, it's human, if, you know, to, to, to fail and to not get the right answer all the time. But the, the key thing is to learn from our mistakes. So, that, you know, we emphasize process. How did we ar arrive at, you know, this conclusion or this solution mm -hmm. or this answer? and to think about that process and, and maybe, you know, how would I have done that differently? How, how can I improve on a solution? And uh, t once again, the more we get help, help students to, uh, to, to think in that way, the more creative they're going to be. It's been an exciting time talking about all of the different four C's. Again, if you want, you can go back and watch uh, back issues of Acts and Excellence uh, on our YouTube channel to go see more for the overview, for deeper learning, and all about the four C's. And coming up next, we're not done yet. <laughs> coming up next, we're heading back outside to the outer ring of kind of all of the support areas and all of the different pieces that support the four C's, which leads to that all-important deeper learning. So, Dr. Nicely, we're kind of at the halfway point here, right. and we're going to continue to move forward. But, folks, we're done for this particular episode, so we want you to stick around. We have more Accent Excellence still to come. A pet is a friend. They are playful, loyal, and every pet wants and deserves a forever home. Did you know the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection has many pets that are available for adoption? Our adoptable pets are listed online with pictures and descriptions, or you can visit us at 1510 Baldwin Avenue, Monday through Saturday, 1130 a.m. to 6 p.m. For more info about providing a pet a forever home, contact Emily Williamson at the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Remember, there's no place like a forever home, so adopt today. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're at Mason's Cove Elementary School, and it's my pleasure to introduce 
Matt Johnson, who is the new principal here at Mason's Cove. But Matt, of course, you're no stranger to Roanoke County Public Schools. You've been with us quite a while. Tell that, us, how did you get started with that, us here? Absolutely. I, um, I started with Roanoke County Schools at Fort Lewis Elementary, where I was a fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. I taught there for 10 years, and I have been a, an assistant principal at Mountain View Elementary for five years. And now this is my first year, starting July 1, right here at Mason's Cove. So, so that's you know, 15 years experience that you're bringing here to Mason's Cove. How do you see those years of experience coming to, coming to play now that you are a principal? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel, I feel very blessed to have um, the background that I have with Roanoke County. Um, with Fort Lewis Elementary, I had, in my 10 years, I had five different principals. And I had a lot of different role models to work with there. And then uh, at Mountain View Elementary, I had a great, um, great leader to work with there with Lee Smith, and she, she provided a lot of mm -hmm. background to me, so I, I really appreciate it. What sort of lessons did you learn along the way that, that now you're here, you're looking going, oh, I've seen this in play, and mm -hmm. now it's time mm -hmm. for me to, to kind of take action? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing is school safety is number one. It's to, you know, it's all about keeping the kids safe. You cannot, um, safe and orderly is the foundation for learning. And if you don't have that in play, then you know everything that we do as far as the learning in the classroom is not gonna, it's not gonna work if they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Coming into this building, what are some of the um, the hopes and the expectations that you have? Wow. Well, you know, Mesa's Cove is an absolutely beautiful school. Um, this community is blessed to have um, this facility here. It's not just the school; it's the it's the uh, front um, ball field. Um, walking track, you know, the, the whole community uses mm -hmm. this school and, and um, you know, for me coming here, when I come to school here and I come to work, I feel like I work in a, in a mountain lodge and I come in and, and um, that kind of feel, it, it's uplifting to the staff, it's uplifting to the students and, and you know, it, it just has a tremendous vibe and, you know, that kind of feeling allows us to move right into learning and that's what it's all about is kind of getting everybody on the, on the same direction, same path, same vision and working towards a common goal. Over the past several months here on this show, we've been highlighting the strategic framework and talking about the four C's in deeper learning and mm -hmm. all of that. So now we let's talk about that from a building level perspective because that's you know here at the school you know that's where the rubber meets the road and yeah. so how do you help guide your staff mm -hmm. in encouraging and and kind of enacting all the values mm -hmm. uh, that we have mm -hmm. uh, talked about through the four C's? Well, I think the you know the development of your professional learning communities and role modeling to the kids that collaboration piece and you know and when we have teachers and support staff who are in the classrooms it's not just that they're walking around you know just monitoring the kids that they it truly is a team teaching environment and they see the adults in the school collaborating and using those critical thinking skills and, and using the four C's and so um, by modeling that to the kids then we can turn around and have them um, work on their projects in the same way. And you had said there's almost kind of another C that's out there, and you talked about it earlier, and that's community. Oh, yeah. And, you know, especially here at a school like Mason's Cove, where the school itself almost is the physical center of the community, mm -hmm. how does it feel being part of that and, and bringing the parents in and being being part of the learning experience? Well, I, you know, that's, that's huge. I think um, the... Um, the parents here at Mason's Cove are very supportive and you know having having the four C's here you know having that collaboration with the PTA and working with them and having the outside community partners come in and work with us that that's going to be a huge help to this school. It's been a fantastic time and again you know just getting started is your is your first round uh, in your first year here uh, as a teacher so we want to offer our sincere congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Johnson again so he's the the new teacher here our new principal, I'm sorry, at uh, Mason's Cove Elementary. And again, I want to thank you so much for being with us, and thank you. Well, thank you. But stick around. There's more acts of excellence still to come. I want to be a Broadway performer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an environmental scientist. I want to be a professional athlete. I want to be cool. I want to be accepted. I want to fit in. I want to be popular. I want to be invited to parties. I don't want to be invisible anymore. I want to be part of the in crowd. You think you have to drink to be in the in crowd, but giving in to peer pressure isn't going to get you anywhere. Be true to yourself to accomplish your big dreams. 
Well, folks, that's going to do it for this month's edition of Accent Excellence. If you'd like to learn more about Roanoke County Public Schools, be sure to check us out online, and don't forget to like us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chuck Lyonberger. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.